Well, another day, another banking controversy. The chief executive of Barclays Bank, Jez Staley, is under investigation by financial regulators in Europe and the United States. They're looking into his attempt to identify a whistleblower who'd raised concerns about a newly appointed senior manager. The Barclays board has reprimanded Mr Staley and cut his bonus. He's apologised. David Enrich is a journalist at the Wall Street Journal newspaper and has written a book about bankers' misbehaviour, The Spider Network. He told me about the various investigations now taking place into the Barclays boss. The normal protocol for a situation like this is that whistleblower complaints are supposed to remain anonymous for obvious reasons, because you don't you want people to be able to report things honestly without fear of retribution or repercussions. And instead, Jess Staley seems to have, at least on two occasions, tried to ascertain the identity of the person who was blowing the whistle. And so there are a number of investigations going on right now. There's an internal investigation at Barclays into what happened, uh, led by the board of directors. There is an investigation, or at least a review underway, by the British regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority, into whether the normal and acceptable protocols were followed. And finally, the New York regulatory department, which has been a real thorn in the side of Barclays and other European banks, also said today that it's opening its own review. So there are a lot of a lot of very serious scrutiny of exactly what Jess Daly did, why he did it, and who helped him do it is now underway. And the Barclays boss has been reprimanded. He's been given what's called a significant cut to his bonus. Do you think he is safe in his job? I think the question is whether this is seen as a one-time misstep or if this is part of a pattern of Jess Daly being arrogant and just not paying that much heed to the way people are supposed to behave. I mean, the question I have is whether this is an isolated incident or whether people at Barclays are going to start coming out of the woodwork saying, on this occasion, he also did this and he did that. And that's what killed Bob Diamond, ultimately. And I think if that's what happened here, Jess Daly could be in really serious trouble. He has apologized and said it was a mistake. What are investors making of it? You're right that he has apologized, and that's to his credit. And it's to Barclays' credit that they have been forthright about this. They not only conducted an investigation, informed regulators, but also announced this on a Monday morning. And the pattern for this kind of stuff with Barclays and a lot of other financial institutions historically has been to try and bury this news, cover it up, minimize the problem. And that's not what Barclays is doing. And I think they deserve some credit for being relatively candid about this and, you know, being transparent to the to a pretty considerable extent. And you, you watch banks, you watch Wall Street, you've written about uh, scandals in the banking sector. Was Wall Street surprised by this revelation? I think Wall Street is surprised in the sense that there is an expectation in that the banks that have received the most scrutiny for all the scandals they've been involved with over the years, that they have cleaned up their act. And that people like Jess Daly, who, who's coming into an institution uh, with a pretty clean pedigree himself, would be so... Would, People think that these that bankers have learned their lessons, and behavior like this and revelations like this suggest that maybe they haven't. That was David Enrich in New York there. Well, whistleblowers were given greater protection in the banking sector after the financial crisis. There is regular criticism, though, of the treatment of those who raise concerns about companies' behaviour. So what is it like when you highlight perceived wrongdoing at a business? Nicholas Wilson spent the past 13 years saying a bank he did work for, HFC, had been overcharging people on their credit cards. Earlier this year, his campaign finally paid off. Thousands of people were offered a multi-million pound compensation payout by HFC's new owners, HSBC. But the campaign has come at a great personal cost to the whistleblower, Nicholas Wilson, as he's been telling me. I first raised my concerns at a meeting with HFC, with their solicitor. And he said, because I was worried we'd lose the legal work, and he said, you can continue doing it on, if you do it on the same basis as our existing solicitors. And I said, well, what basis is that? And he explained the contract, and I said, that's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. And I said, have you ever been challenged? And he said, well, we were, to, we were reported to the Office of Fair Trading once, but we got away with it. And it was from that moment on that I complained to, my, to the partners at work and, and everybody that would listen that we shouldn't be doing it. Um, and I'd, I'd just bought a house the year before, so it, I was in a very precarious situation. But it, when it became obvious that they weren't going to deal with it, I, that's when I reported them to the Solicitors Regulation Authority. Do you think attitudes 
among the authorities have changed with regards whistleblowers since no. you first raised your concerns 13 no. years ago? No, no. If anything, it's got worse. I mean, as as you know, has been shown today with Barclays. You know, the the FCA make these provisions like you have to have a whistleblowing champion, and then somebody blows the whistle at Barclays, and the, and the chief wants to know who it is. All I'm really interested in what what would have Barclays done to him. So, what kind of protections then do you think whistleblowers like yourself should get? Well, I have an idea which I think might solve the problem. Although there is so much corruption that it's going to be difficult to overcome. But my idea is to have a, reg a public register completely independent of any um, business where if you've got concerns about something at work, whatever sector it's in, you can lodge your concerns with the, with the public register and it's dated and it's, you know, details are recorded. Then you blow the whistle at your firm or to an authority or whoever. Then if you are penalised as a result of your whistleblowing, then the company will be prosecuted because you've, you've already registered your concerns. You see, the problem is, when you, if you just you know have a chat with your line manager or whoever and say, I'm concerned about this, if, they, if, you know, if it's an unethical business, which many are, um, they will just tear you to pieces and destroy you. So what have you lost as everything. a result of your decision to blow the whistle? Everything, everything. I... I I sold my house in London, moved to Hastings to save on costs. I've, I've had to fight off two repossession actions. Only only been able to do that because of support I receive on Twitter. Fantastic support I get on Twitter. I've sold everything of value. I had artworks, because I, I, I write music and went to the Royal College of Art. I'm very interested in art. I had a pottery collection. I had a motorbike. I've sold everything. I don't have anything of any value. And I haven't worked properly. I've had two consultancy jobs now. But and is it, that because people think you're a troublemaker? Yeah. I mean, the last job I applied for before I became too ill, it was in a call centre job, paid £13,000 working in a call centre. And I didn't get the job. So I challenged them. I said, well, you know, why not? I've worked in an office all my life. I can pick up the phone and talk to them. They said, because you disclosed confidential information. So what would your advice be? Be then to somebody who is in a company, perhaps they think they have discovered some wrongdoing, they're not happy with something that's going on in their company. What would your advice be to them if they are considering uh, doing that's what you think? Well, that's difficult. My, I, I can only really talk about the finance sector or legal sector, and my advice is not to do it. My advice is move away from the wrongdoing, find another job, keep your mouth shut, find another job and then get tucked in. And then, if you still want to blow the whistle, do it when you're safely re-employed. But if you're in, you know, if you're working at another bank, you'll probably lose your job at the new bank. I mean, it's, it's career suicide. Right. It really is career suicide.